This show is sponsored by PaidToPlayToday.com. Start living life to the fullest. Get a free basic membership at PaidToPlayToday.com. you live from Salt Lake City, Utah, Paid to Play TV, episode 18. Now, when you don't show up for your own show, the show gets made for you. Introducing Garrett J. Not here. Garrett J. Not here today. Well, he'll be here in a few minutes. So when he gets here, Garrett J. White. Welcome to Paid to Play TV. My name is Garrett J. White, your host here at Paid to Play Television. Excited to bring you another episode of absolute powerful transformation in the conversation of spiritual possibility and financial production. We call it getting paid to play. Want to thank Adam Keen. Dude, if you like bacon, you like me too. I don't know. <laughs> and for those who have not seen Adam in the Nacho Libre Lucha Libre Blue mask with his shirt completely off. Probably one of the greatest episodes of all time, Paid to Play Television. Go ahead back a few episodes. You can check that out. You'll love it. I think it's episode 15. So we're going to dive into some really fun conversations today. And I'm not going to be bringing out the flip chart. Oh, no, 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 no. You've been used to the flip chart. I pull out the finger and I go, ah, I can't do it, though, because this time doing the snap, ha, ah, if I do this snap, it's not going to bring what you're normally thinking. I've increased my skills. My power, all time high. All time high. I figured out how to use the snap not only to move physical objects like flip charts, I figured out how to move people. So one of the cool things you're going to get today is you're going to get to meet my friend. We call him the Tommy Bahama model. His name is Timothy Esau. We call it Transformation Time with Tim. Now you're going to get one minute of transformation here shortly in a conversation you desperately need in the area of business. But I'm going to set the stage for that with this idea of what we call feedback. Particularly feedback in the form of questioning your currently held beliefs about life and more importantly about marketing, sales, and your business. Let me start off with an example here. Paid to play television and paid to play the company and the experience itself used to be called a company called Awaken Soul Purpose. Now, Awaken Soul Purpose was fantastic. I loved it. We ran offline workshops. We did online content with it. We were teaching transformation and the idea that you have a higher purpose in life and that a higher purpose you should get paid for in fulfilling it and serving the problems of other people with particular product, services, and solutions. So for two and a half years, up to the time I'm recording this episode, we were doing this. And every single month, it was like ripping my fingernails out to get people to want to come. It was like I would say, awaken soul purpose. And they're like, awaken <laughs> soul purpose? Like nobody understood what I was talking about. It was like I was speaking Korean. Now, half the time I was speaking Korean because... I mean, not really speaking Korean, but I was kind of speaking Korean in the fact that people don't understand what I was saying. So it kind of, it's like telling a joke. You tell the joke and then you got to explain why it's funny. It totally screws up the joke. When I say awakens all purpose and nobody has a clue what you're talking about, it's like, ah, it's kind of like authentic entrepreneur TV. The reason we swapped it is because you guys can't spell. Sorry, love you. And that's okay, neither could I. I misspelled entrepreneur half the time I was trying to pull up my own show. It was retarded. And then the one that was always embedded as a cookie within the Google search engine was always the one that was spelled wrong. So I'd pull up the error message and I was like, yeah. Anyways, so here's the deal. Feedback itself comes. I was getting lots of feedback from the marketing world about Awaken Soul Purpose. Here's how it went. It said, Garrett, the message itself is to out there. You've got to bring it down so that people actually understand what you're talking about. Otherwise, you're not going to build traffic and movement. Now, for about two years, this is how it went down. I was like, come on. The people who are ready for this message, they will hear the message. They'll hear it. They'll see it. They'll be ready. But for those that aren't, well, you know what? Screw them. Isn't that kind of ironic? It's kind of like being drunk in a bar and hitting someone over them making fun of your religious belief while you were hammered. Not that I have any personal experience with that, but I've heard of some people who might have. Okay, that did happen to me. All right, so here's the deal though. In a space and in a place with your business then, your naming and your strategy gets to be left to the side based on what's useful to bring traffic. So finally, I got off my little self-righteous pedestal, which was my righteousness and being right about my lower self's intention, which was bringing revolution, but I was connected and attached to a name. 
So we switched it to pay to play. Guess what happened? <laughs> You don't have to explain that. Paid to play. Hmm. Let me see. If you're in third grade, you understand it. If you don't understand it and you're in second grade, I get that. But if you're in third grade or older, you get this. Doesn't matter how old you are, where you come from. People are like, hmm, get paid to play. So there was a game in the naming. The problem was I wasn't open to the feedback. For two years, I was way more interested in being right about feedback. I was more interested in the information coming to me, taking it personal, taking it on as attack, and somehow looking at myself as less than when I was receiving the feedback. Now, that's not the case nowadays. I'm very open to that. But in a moment, in just a moment, like 30 seconds, I'm gonna bring on the Tommy Bahama model. He's not really a Tommy Bahama model, but I like to say he's a Tommy Bahama model because it's, it's fun. It's kind of like calling Adam, you know, AKA the Buddha awake, okay? This is our next little friend who we're gonna bring on the show today. And I'm gonna snap him in this time because Tim's gonna bring us one minute, one minute of Tim time to transformation. He's gonna give specifically why feedback is the breakfast of champions. Are you ready? Watch my fingers quickly. Watch them. Are you are you ready? Oh my gosh. Breakfast of champions. That's what feedback is. Feedback is what we all get caught up in and sometimes we just forget to listen because in our human conscious we get so into the ego, our own ego. And in that ego, we're so convinced we're right all the time that we completely forget that our product or whatever we're out there hawking or selling is just a solution to someone's problem. And in that solution, maybe we should listen to the marketing aspects of that. Because in the marketing aspects, sometimes we have to get into divine consciousness and our own spirit. And then we find out what our solution's all about. Get away from the ego, listen to the feedback, and rock on. All right, only one other time in the history of my life has a guest on my show done outdone me. It happened on my radio show one time with a man by the name of Bernie Dorman. He showed up on my radio show. It was the only time my host ever took over the show, and I became the host. I became the guest on my own show. It was amazing. Tim, just officially, without a mic, I have to have a little extra mic here because of my voice. Amazingly enough, Tim showed up. Champion. Anyways, Tim, thanks for your minutes of transformation. And he's absolutely right. It's not about right and wrong. That was a problem that I was in. I felt like I needed to be right about the title of my company, which is Awaken Soul Purpose, and in our marketing message, which is Awakening the Divine Purpose of Your Life. That was the game that I was focused on. But being right about it was costing me traffic. It was costing me feet. It was costing me ultimately what my purpose was in building the business in the first place. So we switched to pay to play. First thing we did is we went and built a fan page, pay to play. We watched what happened. We had 400 people sign up in how long? Like three days, we didn't even market it. All of a sudden I started talking about it. People said, what do you do out in, the, out in life? What is your business? And in the past I would say, well, awaken sole purpose. And I'm like, huh, that's intriguing. What does that mean? And now I say, well, we teach people how to get paid to play. Holy crap, I'd like to know more about that. This actually happened at a, at, at a car dealership. My wife got a new car here a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, and this exact thing happened. I was sitting and talking to the car salesman. He said, well, what do you do for a living? I said, I teach people how to get paid to play. He's like, well, I should probably know about that. I was like, you probably should. He said, well, what should I do? And I said, well, go to this website. And I put him into my what? Into my funnel. Into my funnel, leveraging technology, just like this television show, record it once, let it be seen a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million times, allowing each individual to have their own experience based on the technology. Now, I was against technology too, because I used to say what? I used to say, oh, belly to belly, need to be, oh, I need to love you, squeeze you, hug you, touch you, be in that space, etc. And that was the only way we could create possibility in your business. The second game was I was committed to being right. So feedback itself, again, is information. When people are giving you feedback, you should be seeking for it, by the way. The greatest information I get today is not what people are telling me works good. After speaking events, this is what used to happen. It's what I call the petting zoo. I would speak at a workshop, there'd be a thousand people there, and at the end there'd be like 300 people wanting to talk to me, and my friends would call this a petting zoo. They're like, oh, Garrett just stepped into the petting zoo. And I was like, what? What do you mean the petting zoo? He's like, everybody wants to talk to you. I was like, ah, you're totally right, they do. And I love that everybody wanted to talk to me, but the problem was, in that space, everyone in that circle, no one was coming up to me and saying, hey, dude, just want to let you know, that really sucked. Like your presentation sucked. See, all the people that want to give you the actual feedback that will be hugely valuable are the ones who went out the back door and went, screw you, dude, you suck. And I want that feedback. I want the feedback from the people who think that what I'm doing doesn't work, who see something I'm not seeing. Up until that point, though, here about a year and a half ago, I was unwilling to have that conversation. I was too committed to being right. Being committed to being right will absolutely bankrupt your company. It did this to one of my first, one of my last companies, the Investors Paradigm was my last banking company. We built up, we exploded, and then we imploded. In seven months, we imploded, lost everything millions. For one simple reason, and that was because I was committed to being right in our stand versus doing what was useful. Recently, I was listening to a program by the author of the book, The Skinny Bitch, 
Now, the title of the book itself, in and of itself, you hear it, you're like, skinny bitch. You're like, ah, half you're like, oh, I'm totally offended. I can't believe you just said that. I get it. I can understand that. But take the title away. I was listening to the program she was being interviewed on, and she was talking about the marketing of the message, right? The book itself is actually about human or about animal rights and about vegetarian lifestyles, which was her passion. But going out and talking about that, how many people are going to come to that workshop? None. But how many people are going to listen when they see a title of a book in a bookshelf at the airport that says skinny bitch? Tons! It's kind of like paid to play. And all the feedback she was getting had her build something that would work, and now she sold over two million copies. So my question for you today as we leave this episode is, where in your business right now are you currently being unwilling to look at feedback? Where are you not absolutely seeking for it? This morning on Facebook, I was having a conversation with people who passionately disagree with me and think I'm going to hell. I'm very, very excited about their conversation. Not all the people who are like, dude, I totally agree with you, Garrett. Your stand is awesome. Now, I love those people too because they're part of my tribe. But I also love the people who aren't part of my tribe who question every single ounce of what I do. And I just happen to sleep with, have children with, and be married to my greatest advocate and partner in my life. And that's my wife, Danielle. Because my wife, she questions it all which is beautiful because she gives me the feedback that I need moment to moment, day to day, week to week, month to month in my business and on my personal life. So if you're not plugged into your spouse, I would highly encourage you. If you're not plugged in the feedback, start making it happen. If you're too committed to being right, my question for you is, what is the cost? This has been another episode of Paid to Play Television. Welcome you here every week like we do every single week, telling you to jump on to paidtoplaytoday.com to check out more about these concepts, these messages, and how you truly can get paid to play. My name is Garrett J. White, The Authentic Entrepreneur, reminding you to be real, be raw, be relevant, and most importantly, to be authentic.